Hey guys, today I'm going to try out a new technique for redoing the right front axle seal on my 1998 Dodge Ram 4x4. Those of you who saw the last video will realize I've done this before. I've been in this axle before. The first time I was laying on my back, I had a long threaded rod. Um, I was uh, holding a big washer in place to pull the seal into place and I had my wife tapping on this long threaded rod to pull the axle seal into place. Now that actually worked pretty well. And for upward of a year, it was fine. But then I had to redo the left seal. And to get at the left, of course, you've got to undo the right. And I did the procedure again. Again, it seemed to work pretty well uh, until about a month ago. And then a month ago, uh, I started to see a little drip of um, gear oil on my right front tire. And obviously, it, was, it failed. And so I tried the same procedure again. I tried to do it alone this time. And uh, never worked out. Uh, still got lots of... Uh, gear oil dripping onto that right front tire. So I've researched a problem. I'm going to try uh, using a little different technique, hopefully a better technique that allows me to do it as a single person. So what is it about this seal in particular that's so difficult? With most seals, you take a hammer and a piece of wood or a seal driver and you tap the seal in gently from the outside, uh, uh, seating the seal. It's actually quite uncommon to have difficulty putting a seal in. But this seal is different. This seal is at the end of a long tube. There's no way you can get a hammer down that long tube. And so the seal is designed to be pulled in from the inside out. And so what we've been doing is we've been taking this threaded rod and sliding it through the seal and then use a big washer and then a nut. And then with one person setting the washer up to line up with the seal, we'll pull it into place. But with this seal, there's no flat surface. There's no easily uh, measured flat surface on which to pull. And of course, ideally, you want to pull on the metal parts and you want to leave the soft parts alone. But if it slides off, if the washer slides off, then you're in trouble. And so the metal parts, there's a metal part that's deep inside and then the ridge of tissue, but no easily pried metal part. And so ultimately what you need is a seal driver that's custom made for this indication. So I researched this problem on the internet and I found such a beast right here. This is a custom made seal driver for this particular seal. And what it does is it slides into the seal like this. And not surprisingly, it's a perfect fit. It's a fit of a condom on a porn star. And basically what we're gonna do here is we're gonna slide this threaded rod through the seal driver, put a nut on the end, and then we'll pull the seal into place. And we'll probably put another nut here to hold it um, steady so it doesn't wobble. And on the other side, we're gonna cut the threaded rod off We'll put another nut with a piece of channel iron and we'll position the seal so it's exactly parallel to the tube and so it pulls in indirectly. Let's see how this plan works. people seem to be under the mistaken impression that you need to undo this big castle nut here. But the only reason I would have to undo this nut would be to get at the wheel bearing and replace the wheel bearing. You can actually replace the universal joint without ever undoing that big castle nut because you know, basically the whole thing comes apart like this. Okay, so here's a look down the axle tube and you can see there's the seal we need to replace right at the end of that long tube. Not so easy to get at. All right, we're underneath the right side of the car and this is the CAD housing here. This is the shifter housing and we've got to undo these four bolts here and there's one behind there. We'll take the whole housing off and lift it out of place. 
Okay, I've taken the housing off and just lifted it up there and hold it there. Now we can see we've got this nut here. We can just slide this nut out of the way. Like so. We're just going to put this nut aside. Notice that we've got a oil pan below to catch the drippings because this is full of gear oil. Now, the seal we're going to replace is right in here. You see it? Right there. So we're going to go in there and replace that seal. I can't get it out with my fingers. I'll have to tap it out with a long rod. Okay. So here's the seal here. I'll just pull it out this way. That's the way it goes in. This, in, this side on the outside, and this side on the inside. You can see there's a seat that, that seal fits into, and one of the critical things is that you not take it out too far, that you not pull it uh, outside too far, because it'll crimp down on the axle, and then it'll ruin the seal. So you've got to pull it in just right and not too deep. Okay, now you see how I've done this. I've got two nuts in the back here, and I've pull these two nuts in together so that they're held fast and that way when I rotate the threaded rod they won't tend to undo itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide the threaded rod into the uh, space, uh, slide on the seal driver with the seal on top and then thread the nut on that at the back and then pull it into place. Okay, now I'm going to slide the threaded rod down the tube. I'm going to take my seal and seal driver. I've got a little permatex put on the outside just to try and allow this to take a little better. So, and then we'll put the nut on. Okay, you can feel that snugged up quite nice. Alright, now I'm going to put the channel iron in on the other side. So here we are. So I've got the threaded rod through the seal driver and the seal. They seem to be lined up pretty well. Seal's in place and now I'll pull it into place. Okay, now I've used these white marks here to center my channel iron so that the threaded rod is parallel to the axle tube. So now I'm going to carefully thread this into place. This is a 15 16 nut. So a minor problem of the threaded rod spinning when I turn the nut. So I put a 15 16 socket, socket and another two nuts on the outside and I'm just going to tighten this up holding the threaded rod in place with the nuts on the outside. Okay, I'm back under the vehicle now. Well, the tricky thing is to know how far in you want to go. And here I've got the seal driver in just to the level of the flange right there. Let's see if I that a little better for you. That's how far in it is. We'll have to see in retrospect whether that was the right depth. Now they say that if you go too far it'll squeeze in on the axle so we don't want to go too far. So I'd rather under um, tighten it because I can always come back in later and tighten it again. So this is what we're left with. There's the seal right there. It looks to me like it's about the right depth. Just shit a little more right. That looks to me like it's about perfect. So we'll put it all back together again and see if it works. Okay, success. Pulling the seal in this way is faster, simpler, stronger, and it's easier. And you don't need two people to do the task. If you're a professional, obviously the chance that the client will end up bringing the car back because of a failed seal is going to be lower because you can pull the seal in with more directed force and with less chance of damaging the seal. Overall I'd say this is a winner technique. 
The big issue, from my perspective, is cost. Of course, a professional is able to pass on his expenses to the customer, but as an amateur, I'm the customer. Now, the companies that make these seals will make the entire driver, the whole thing, but you end up paying about $180 for that whole kit. And so I felt that was a bit too steep for what may end up being a one-use job. And so I ended up buying just the seal driver part itself, and I made the rest of it. But even then, I ended up paying quite a bit. This seal driver by itself was $45, which seems like a reasonable cost. But then I ended up paying $35 of extra fees in shipping and handling. So you're into it about $80 for this single-use tool. Now, if it uh, saves me from having to go back into the axle, then it's probably uh, money well spent. But uh, then again, if it works the first time, I've spent a lot of money. Could I make this myself? I think I could. I think I could make this myself. You could make it with a lathe, a wood lathe, or a metal lathe, but I don't have access to one of those. Could you use a large washer? Well, we did that with the first video. I had a slide hammer, and I had my wife helping, and I managed to do it successfully, and so you may be successful at that. But you might be able to use a threaded rod and drag it into place with some stacked washers, uh, pressing on the outer aspect of the seal to make sure you don't press on the rubber parts. I think if I were to do this again myself, that's the way I would do it. Thanks for watching.